around the world, 640,000 tonnes of ghost fishing gear is lost into our oceans annually. Now, when we're talking about ghost fishing gear, we're talking about big commercial fishing nets. Long lines that are lost over vessels, whether they're deliberately discarded, accidentally lost overboard, traps on reefs or wrecks. Or they can still continue to drift in our oceans, and they can drift for thousands of kilometres in our oceans and leave a path of destruction in their way. Now, the reason these ghost nets are dangerous and cause so much damage is because they can continue to fish and entrap life. We're talking about whales, sharks, dolphins, seabirds. All of these creatures run the risk of entanglement and death. And the ghost fishing cycle is a vicious cycle. One small fish runs into the net, a larger fish comes, predates on that fish, themselves becoming entrapped and also dying. And this cycle of entrapment, feeding and death continues on. And that is ghost fishing. This is a video I shot. This is not miles away. This is only a couple of kilometres away at Greta Point. That's what's left of an eagle ray caught in a net. If you look at that coil of line coming off the back of it there, you can see the panic that that creature has gone through. It is throes of death. It's barrel rolled till it died. You can see fish frames, other creatures starting to feed on them. The devastation and damage of this net that's only been down there for one week. And as the first diver down, when I was videoing this, I can tell you firsthand, it's a truly harrowing experience to see it firsthand. You, you, it's very visceral, it's right on top of you. And as you can see in these conditions, we're often diving in low, cold, dark environments. In addition, our oceans are becoming clogged with plastics, bottles, cans, shopping trolleys, street cones, plastic bags, you name it, we find it. It's a global issue that requires urgent attention. In 2009, a group of technical divers were diving in the Dutch North Sea, exploring the myriad of wrecks that lay scattered across the sea floor. What they discovered was that a number of these wrecks were tangled with ghost fishing nets, nets that were continuing to fish and create that vicious cycle of destruction. They decided to take action, and they formed an organisation called Ghost Fishing, a group of volunteers who have taken it upon themselves to rid the oceans of these destructive fishing nets. Between 2013 and 2018, over 500 tonnes of ghost fishing nets have been removed from the ocean. That was using the technical expertise of over 100 divers spanning 25 different countries. Just to put that 500 tonnes into perspective, that's about the same weight as three blue whales. Ghost fishing have teamed up with the Healthy Seas Initiative, an initiative designed to not only remove these nets from the ocean and prevent them from going to landfill, but to actually reuse and recycle these products, a circular economy a journey from waste to wear. And sadly, the problem is also right in our own backyard. Some of you guys might recognise this. It's really close to where we're sitting right now. And uh, there's a lovely bar there. You can have a meal and have a drink and have a coffee in the cafeteria. There's a recreational yacht club. It really is a beautiful place to hang out on a sunny day. However, um, the situation underwater in there is very different. Wellington Harbour has become a dump site car batteries, motorcycles, e-scooters, e-bikes, bottles, cans, plastics, you name it, we find it, it's down there. We've got a real out of sight, out of mind mentality here when we just throw that bottle over the side of the boat or leave our coffee cup on the side of the road, blows around, ends up in the storm drains, guess where that ends up? That's right, ends up in the ocean. But these things like the car batteries, like the motorcycle engines start to leak toxins they're leaking oil, they're leaking fuel. That oil and that fuel and that toxin goes into our sediment and that sediment starts to modify the habitat. And it starts to create what we call toxic artificial reefs. However, here in this wonderful country of ours, we too have a dedicated team of volunteers. In 2015, Ghost Fishing International asked Rob if he would set up a New Zealand branch 
and Ghost Fishing New Zealand was created. We have teams of scuba divers and free divers who work tirelessly year round in very challenging conditions, low visibility, cold water temperatures and a lot of surface wind chop. They remove this rubbish from the seafloor and pass it back up to shore teams who work for hours meticulously removing as many animals as they can from that rubbish and returning it back into the ocean. We have members of the public, families, children, all joining in our cleanup events. In the last four years, Ghost Fishing New Zealand have undertaken at least 25 large scale underwater cleanups. Anywhere between 30 and 100 volunteers at any one time are participating. As the dive team leader for Ghost Fishing New Zealand, I often get out of the water after a clean-up dive. I'm cold and I'm shivering. My dive gear smells of diesel because of the slicks that we've just dived through in the marinas. My gloves smell like the anoxic sulfurous sediment that we've just removed the rubbish from. But inside, I am so excited, I'm super pumped, because what I've been able to witness firsthand is a reduction in that rubbish. Year after year, as we're going back and visiting the same sites over and over, we're seeing less and less rubbish in the marine environment. But what is most inspiring for me, as a marine biologist, is the changes that we're seeing in marine communities. In Frank Kitts Park Lagoon, literally 10 minutes down the road from here, we're seeing more stingrays in that lagoon now than we have in years. And we can only hope that that is because of the repeated efforts of cleaning up the seabed in that lagoon. Those stingrays can now forage properly for food without getting a mouthful of a glass bottle or a tin can. And that is really, really inspiring. Now this is a small step in a global mission. And Wellington's not the only place with problems. I'm sure some of you guys saw on the internet the images that went out there of the e-scooters that someone threw in the harbour up in Auckland. I think there was at least 18 that I counted in that one photograph. And that is a crazy problem. Why would anybody throw something that, you know, we can all enjoy? Why would they throw that into the ocean? And I've looked time and time again for some logic in that. But there, there simply isn't any logic there. We have a clean, green, pollution-free image here in New Zealand. But as I'm sure you've seen with some of these slides, it's, it's simply not the case. We're only really scratching the surface here as Ghost Fishing New Zealand, trying to change people's perceptions through our conservation, through our documentation of what we do, and our public outreach, showing what's down there, showing what we need to protect. We need to get people to care. We need you to care. Just imagine what our coastline could look like if you all participated in local cleanup events. Just imagine what our harbours and our marinas might look like if you didn't flick that cigarette butt or piece of chewing gum into the gutter, only to have it wash down the stormwater drains and into our harbours and marinas. I'd like you just to think, just for one moment, what could your contribution be? How could you join the ghost fishing movement? In Malaysia, in 2013, a Guinness Book of World Records was set. 134 divers over seven days removed 3,000 kilos of rubbish. That's about equivalent to two mid-sized cars. Phenomenal undertaking. What we didn't realise was in 2017, we totally smashed that record out of the ballpark <laughs> with only 30 divers in one hour. We removed 8,000 kilos of rubbish from the seafloor from our Wellington waterfront CBD area. That's about five mid-sized cars. <laughs> Thank you. But it gets better. We smashed it again the year after. In 2017, with only seven divers, two of which you're looking at right here, in one hour, we removed over 3,000 kilos of rubbish from an inner city marina five minutes down the road from here. But wait, there's more. Because earlier this year, we smashed it again. Seven divers in one hour removed four and a half thousand kilos of rubbish from the seafloor. 
you. The point I'm trying to make here is what an incredible impact just a handful of people can really have on our marine environment. Now this is one small step for man, but one <laughs> truly giant leap for ocean conservation and mankind. Thank, Thank you. you.